I get asked a lot how I do particles in my games, and I figured that this would be a great time to give an example of how I break down how to code things and implement them. My process for breaking things down into code is pretty simple. I just pretty much think of what that thing is and what information I need to basically simulate it. So let's take a look at this. A particle is a thing that exists at a location. Typically it moves around and typically it changes over time. Also, it typically disappears after a certain amount of time. So what information do we need to represent a particle then? Well, clearly if it exists at a location, we need to track its location. And if it moves around, we might want to track its velocity or its speed in direction. Typically I just do it as the velocities for the x and y axis, so I can just have that as two values that are easy to apply to the location. Typically particles change over time, like they'll get smaller usually. In this case, I'll be using circles that just get smaller. And finally, it typically disappears after a certain amount of time. Uh, these last two things are kind of tied together in the same value. You can simulate them off of the same information. When you want to measure a certain amount of time, in real life you would like take a stopwatch or look at a clock, and you can do the same thing in code by just assigning a number to a variable and modifying it every now and then, or in our case every frame, so you can see how much time has passed. So frame 1 you have the value of 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And you can see how much time has passed. In the case of particles, they typically last for a specified amount of time, so instead what you might want to do is you'll have a timer that counts down to zero. So you'll say, I want it to last for 20 frames. So you go 20, 19, 18, etc. until you get down to zero. In this case though, I won't be modifying that timer by whole numbers because I want that timer to represent the radius of the circle which is this value up here. And if you're using an animation for your particle, you might want it to be the frame of the animation you're on. So you want to subtract a decimal to make it go slower than one frame of the animation per frame in game. So now let's start coding this or figuring out how we're going to code this really. Uh, normally people would just write a class for this with all these attributes. So it's location, it's velocity, and uh, it's timer basically. In my case, since it's not that much information, I'm just going to just store that information in the list. So I'll use the form location velocity timer. And the thing about particle systems is that you typically have a bunch of particles. And when you have a bunch of something, or as you can see here, we've got like a few attributes, we, you store that in the list. And since we will have a bunch of particles, you'll also store that in the list. Uh, also, t sometimes when you have a bunch of something, you'll store it in a dictionary. But in our case, the list is best because of the way those things are accessed. So let's start making our collection of particles. That's just an empty list. So particles equals that. And all we'll have to do to add a particle is just append to the particles list. So particles to append and then we'll want our location. Well, here's our list, which represents the particle, this list right here. And the first value of our particle is its location. So it's a thing that exists at a location. So I'm just going to spawn all my particles at 250, 250. And I'll give them a velocity of kind of a random amount, so they're going in all different directions. So random. So now I can do, this. Is, the first value will be the velocity on the x-axis. So I'm going to make this random. I'm going to go random dot and in 0 to 20 divided by 10 minus 1. Okay, so what I'm doing here is this whole thing gets a number from negative 1 to 1, but it doesn't just pick negative 1, 0, or 1. Because I'm picking a number from 0 to 20 here, it's a much wider range, and then I can divide it by 10 to make it a more precise number, so it's not just 0, 1, and negative 1. Now it's negative 1, negative 0 0.9, negative 0 0.8, etc. This negative 1 here is just because when you evaluate this part, it'll end up being 0 to 2. And you, we want negative 1 to 1, so we subtract 1. And now I want this thing going up. So I'm going to do negative 2, let's say. Our next value is the timer, so how long it'll last, basically. We want this particle to last kind of a random amount of time, I would guess. And um, and, in. and remember, for our purposes, this value is also going to be the radius of the circle. So this is not going to be in frames. So I'm going to do 4 to 6 seems fair. So that's what adds the particle to our list of particles. 
now we have to process the particles and show them. So for particle in particles, we can now process every particle and render them. So the first thing we need to process is its movement because it's a thing that exists in a location that typically moves around. So particle zero plus equals particle, well, particle zero, zero, that's its x coordinate, plus equals particle one, zero, that's its velocity on the x axis. And then we can do the same thing for the y axis. If keeping track of all these indexes is kind of a pain for you, you can just make an object uh, or, or a class and make your particles objects. So you can just use the name of the attribute. And now for the part where it changes over time. So particle two minus equals, since we're counting down, and then a certain amount. So I'm going to do 0 0.1. That means that we'll go one in every 10 frames. And since this is a measure of radius, or we're going to be using it as a measure of radius of the circles, this is subtracting one tenth of a pixel from the radius of the circle every frame. So now we can draw a circle. So pygame.draw.circle. We have to choose our surface, which is a screen. We have to choose, I believe it's the location. Let me just check that real quick. Okay, the color is actually next. So I'm just going to do a white circle. Then it's the location. And our location is just particle zero because that the particle zero is just a list that contains the X and Y values. For the radius, it's just going to be particle two. Now we've got our thing that exists in a location that typically moves around and typically changes over time. So we've got our radius here and that's changing. All we've got left is the thing that typically disappears after a certain amount of time. So all we have to do is check if the time's up. So if particle two is less than or equal to zero, then we can remove it. So particles dot remove particle. Uh, this is actually kind of a bad idea uh, to do it this way. Typically, you don't want to remove stuff during iteration. It'll cause, in our case, flickering uh, with some particles. I'll do a video explaining how to deal with this in the future. But just know that this isn't a super good practice. It'll work. You'll notice some visual glitches, kind of. The main issue is that we're just removing during iteration. And the idea is that it skips the next item in iteration when you change the length of the list while iterating through it. So if you want to figure it out yourself, you just handle all the removals after the iteration here. There's a very short way to write it, though, that I'll show later on. It's a bit complicated, though. Anyways, that should be it. So let's take a look. I forgot that this needs to be a integer. Pygame wants integers for the radius of its circles. Oh, and it also wants integers for the locations of its circles. So I do have to do this. I have to get each one individually and convert it to an integer. Let's take a look at our particles. So this is a pretty nice particle system. So I think a sign that scares a lot of people away from messing around with particles is that they expect that they're going to have to do something fancy to make sure it runs well and doesn't make the frame rate drop. Really, you don't have to do much. Just make sure you remove particles when you're done with them and you won't really experience slowdowns. If you want to run physics on your particles though, that's a little bit of a different story. I'll, I'll probably do a video on that in the future. The idea is called location hashing or spatial hashing, I'm not entirely sure. It's a little bit complicated, so I'm not going to cover it in this video. Next up, I'm going to add some gravity to these particles because you guys might be wondering how you do that. It's pretty simple. All you gotta do is modify the velocity same way you would with like the player if you want gravity to be applied to them. Particle one, one plus equals 0, 0.0. Let's do 0 0.03, I think. So we're just adding to the vertical velocity. So it's pulling the vertical velocity downwards. So as you can see here, it doesn't go down because by the time it levels out in vertical velocity, it's faded away. So I'm going to increase that gravity a bit. Okay, so now that gravity is at 0.1 instead of 0.03. And as you can see, the particles kind of shoot up a little bit and then they fall down. And if you really want to have some fun, you can bind the particle spawn to your mouse. And I'll do that right now. Okay, I've added it to my mouse, so you can see it follows my mouse now. And yeah, particles are kind of fun, and you can do a lot of them if you want. Uh, it takes quite a bit to slow stuff down, really. There's just a couple things I want to mention. With Pygame Circles, they're not super clean, because uh, they're not really meant to deal with low-resolution circles. Uh, you can't really see it here, 
I mean, uh, I can see it, but you probably can't really see it in the video, but the pixel arrangements of these circles are not quite what you'd expect with a circle as it decreases in size. It makes rectangles and squares and all sorts of stuff that doesn't quite look right. And you can really see this if you're doing a pixel art game where things are scaled up, which is why typically with my games, I draw my own animation for the particles where it's just circles of decreasing size. And then I just go through those frames. If you're curious about how you do animations themselves, I do have a video on that, which you can check out. And it's not super hard to implement it with particles because if you think about it, particles are really just entities. They just don't do as much. They're just visual. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, uh, I do have a Discord server that you can go and ask questions in. I've got a channel dedicated to questions in there. I probably will not be responding to as many comments now. I do read all of them, but I've gotten to a point where uh, it just takes a decent amount of time to respond to the comments because sometimes you have to go back and forth between people to answer their questions. So for the ones that I expect that that might happen, I might just not answer it because uh, it would be a pain. If, if you have questions like that, try to take it to my Discord server where I can easily go back and forth. If you're interested in any of my other projects, you can check out my Twitter too. I hope I'll see you guys in the next video.